Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me on this second week of our study called The Two Hands of Assurance. We've learned a different point for each finger last week. On one hand, depending on whether you're left-handed or right-handed or whatever you want, you can start with either hand. <clears throat> but we learned the first thing, our thumb, God is unconditional love in relationship. That's lovely. Then on our first finger, we learned that that relationship consists of the Father, who is so noble that he took care of all sin for everybody. Then our next finger, Jesus. The relationship consists of Jesus, who is truth. Our ring finger, it also consists of the Holy Spirit, who is grace, love in action. And then our pinky. That relationship that we've been included in includes everybody, you and everybody, all people from all time. We've all been invited in and included in God's divine triune circle dance of love and joy and peace and grace and everything good. And when we understand that, that brings peace. Now this week we're going to start with our other hand, the thumb on the other hand. We want to remember, think of that, reminding ourselves that God is for you and for all people. God's definition of justice, starting in the Old Testament, is making all things right for everyone. So we want to think that God is for us and all people, and that is just. The reason I bring these words up like just and peace and truth, noble and things, we're using the verse from Philippians 4, 7 and 8, which says meditate or fix your thoughts or center your mind on them or implant them in your heart. Meditate on what is true, noble, just, pure, virtuous, lovely, of good report, praiseworthy, reputable, compelling, brings peace, and gracious. So uh, those, are, those are words that are used in several different translations of that verse. So one translation says that when we do that, God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. That's from the message. All right, we want to thank today, think of our thumb, God is for you and for all people. And we want to remember that is just. That's what he calls justice. All right. That's also called the restoration of all things. In Acts chapter 3, verses 17 to 22, <clears throat> the uh, uh, apostles there, uh, John is speaking, and he's talking to these people, these Jewish people, and reminding them of what happened. And he says, now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, not fully aware of what you were doing, just as you rulers did also. And so God has fulfilled what he foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, would suffer. So repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, and return to God. Seek his purpose for your life. So Understand that your sins are wiped away, blotted out, completely erased, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, restoring you like a cool wind on a hot day, and that he may send to you Jesus, the Christ, who has been appointed for you, whom heaven must keep until the time for the complete restoration of all things about which God promised through the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient time. That's from the Amplified Version. God is all about and what he's doing and what he will ultimately complete is the restoration of all things. All right. <clears throat> Psalm, excuse me, Psalm 56, 9. David says, this I know, God is for me. Now, Paul takes off from that verse in Romans 8, 31 and says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Now, I'm going to go to what Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 3. Paul, just he, he's talking about different things and grace and our relationship and being included since before the beginning of time. And then he just, just breaks into praise. Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. He says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family, everyone, and heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in your inner person, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through his faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height, to know the love of Christ, which passes all human knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Now, look at 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 21. The love of Christ compels us, 
because we judge thus. If Jesus died for all, then all died, and he did die for all. Now those who live, the same all, should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, Paul says, we regard no one according to the flesh, physical appearance, what they look like. What It may look like they're not close to God, but they are. Even though we've known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, since anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we're ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Know what's already happened to you. Be reconciled to God. For he made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So today, remember this. God reconciled everyone in the whole world. It means the cosmos, everyone forever, for all time. And the Greek tense there means he did something that continues throughout all perpetuity. He has reconciled everyone to himself. He doesn't count anyone's sins against them. And he told us now to go and tell people that. Tell them, hey, you've been reconciled. Realize it. So today, remember that God is unconditional love in relationship. And that relationship includes the Trinity and us and everyone. And we remember now, God is for you and all people. And that is just. When you think about the fact that is just, God's definition of justice is restoring all things to himself. All right. Thanks. Join me tomorrow. We'll talk some more.